Hello, it's uh, Paul Beckwith. It's uh, Monday, January 27th, 2014. Um, I apologize for my voice. I have a, a bit of a sinus infection. Um, nothing that, uh, you know, a little bit of sinus rinse uh, doesn't clear up. And I find if you uh, actually put coffee in here, uh, it works better than uh, salty water. It also gives you, it gives you a quicker uh, coffee buzz. As the week goes on, I'm probably going to do a few more of these videos, lots to talk about, and you'll see that the size of my coffee increases. Probably by the end of the week, I'll have one of those big boxes that holds about 20 coffees or so. Uh, but anyway, uh, I talked about the Northern Hemisphere, the Arctic amplification of temperature, the temperature gradient reduction, the changing uh, distortion of the jet streams, um, the transfer of less heat um, to the northern hemisphere from the equator because the Arctic is warming by itself. It's absorbing a lot more energy. So more energy is, more heat is being transferred by the oceans and atmosphere to the southern hemisphere, which is the topic of my uh, discussion today. So let's get right into the um, images, the animations. Uh, so I'll start off uh, here and uh, get my pointer. So this is the uh, this is the temperature anomaly. So th what this does is this site. This is the global forecast system model. It cycles from today uh, out seven days, um, and it's pretty in pretty good agreement with the European model. So what it shows is the temperature anomaly over the next seven days. Each each cycle. Each image update is a three-hour period um, over the next week. Um, and what we're seeing here is we're seeing uh, large positive temperature anomalies over Australia, southern Australia. Uh, we're also seeing uh, some, you know, various uh, structure in Antarctica. We have some warm areas. Uh, we have some colder areas. There's some, there's kind of a fragmented pattern. Um, and what we're seeing over here is the uh, jet stream um, circulation in the southern hemisphere. We've got, this is a polar view from the South Pole, this is Antarctica. So you can see these jet streams motoring around. And this is, uh, it's, it, it's our winter in the northern hemisphere, so it's summer in the southern hemisphere. Um, and you can see, so you, what you can see is the cold air around Antarctica is confined within the jet streams. There's, there's not as much fracturing of the jet in the southern hemisphere because there's, there's open ocean completely around Antarctica. There's, there's no land to interfere or break up the jet streams due to land ocean contrast, as is the case in the northern hemisphere. Um, north. Um, so what's happening is, is because less heat is going from the equator north, more heat is coming to the southern hemisphere. Um, it clashes with the cold air. Um, so the temperature gradient in this region is larger than it would be normally um, because of Arctic sea ice. So the jet stream is stronger and because the jet stream is stronger, it's faster. So uh, the heat coming south is, is trapped just north of the jet stream, so little, so Australia gets it, um, which is just north of the jets here. You know, parts of uh, Africa and South America also get it. Um, if I go, um, I can show you the absolute temperature um, in the southern hemisphere. This is a surface temperature. And so what we can see is the jets are confining the colder air. We're getting temperatures, you know, about the minus 40 or so in, on Antarctica, um, as we expect. Uh, but look at the temperatures in Australia. Um, what we're getting is areas in the brown and white as we cycle through. Look at these temperatures. So these temperatures are approaching 50 degrees. They're mid-40s. Um, and of course, a lot of the cities are along the coast, so so major cities are being hit um, by this 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 um, heat wave. So, and also there's uh you know there's very warm temperatures uh, you know up all all over. There we go. Very so we're getting into the whites and the grays um, for very very strong temperatures uh, there. Um, now a lot of question comes up as to uh, why the sea ice 
has been expanding. In fact, it's reaching record levels. Um, now, what's happening is the following. Okay, so there's more heat coming into the southern hemisphere. So the jets are becoming stronger. Um, the Coriolis force deflects things to the left in the southern hemisphere. So these strong winds coming around um, bring a component away from the Antarctica coast. And so this pulls the sea ice out further. Um, that's one factor. Another factor is that um, because the jets are stronger here, the southern annular mode is stronger. So the temperatures over Antarctica on the surface are very cold. Um, and the ozone layer, um, as the ozone layer decreases, the stratosphere cools. The stratosphere is only, starts at about eight kilometers near the, this pole, and the altitude of Antarctica is about four kilometers. So the atmosphere is very thin there. So a rapid cooling of the stratosphere because of ozone depletion um, has transfer effects to cool the surface. Now, uh, overall, Antarctica is still shedding ice because the warm water underneath is, is melting the ice from below. We know this from gray satellites, but the sea ice is growing because the surface is colder, as I said, and the jets are getting stronger, so the Coriolis is pulling um, the ice away. And also, as we get lots of melting of the ice from the continent, um, the water is very fresh around the coast and fresh water freezes at a higher temperature than salt water. It freezes at zero, of course. Salt water freezes at about minus 1.8 degrees C. So those factors combined are giving us the record sea ice, and it all comes back to the jets and the heat transfer and the destruction of ice in the, north, in the, in the uh, Arctic. Um, just show you a global picture here. Uh, go back to my global image, right? We have we always have to consider the Earth as a system. I showed this in my previous video. It just shows you, you know, the strong uh, temperature anomalies in Australia, some regions of Antarctica, also in southern South Af Southern Africa and in southern South America. So the heat is more heat is coming south. Uh, but it's not getting to Antarctica. It's kind of stuck because of these strong ocean currents and circumpolar winds, um, which completely transverse this latitude with no land at all. Totally different in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, also, what I want to show you here is this is the global, um, these are the jet streams um, globally. Um, so, what we can see is, is uh, in the southern hemisphere, which is the summer, um, and uh, as I mentioned, these, these jet streams have an unimpeded path. Um, so there's, there's less distortions and there's less um, waviness in the jet. So, so this provides a, basically a wall. The warm air, com the additional warm air coming southward does not make it to Antarctica, so it increases these wind these wind strengths, and the, so the heat, you know, just north of these jets is amplified, which is so Australia is taking it on the chin um, from that type of thing. Um, I also, this just shows you the um, uh, the uh, precipitation patterns. Um, and what we can see is, so the, the blue areas are snow, so we're seeing the regions that get snow, we're seeing the regions that get rain, this is the intertropical con convergence zone regions where there's lots of rainfall, and you can see um, down, you can see that, uh, you know, down here there is some snow, but there's not much, it's, it's very, very cold over Antarctica. And when it's really, really cold, the water, uh, the water vapor content in the air is, is minimal, so it's hard to get precipitation when it's super cold. You tend to get a lot more precipitation near the transition, um, just at and around zero, you know, uh, where, where the, uh, or, you know, at warmer, warmer temperatures. So one of the things I wanted to point out here is California is still in the drought. Um, you know, not much is getting to California. Um, I showed, uh, you know, we, before that the jets are moving up north. So most of the precipitation that California would normally get are going up into Alaska um, as snow. 
and uh, are going up into this region. Um, and uh, you know, so all this, uh, these warm temperatures in Alaska and this, uh, you know, heavy precipitation, um, it's doing a number on the uh, snow packs and we just had the, uh, you know, major avalanche, avalanche there uh, cut off uh, uh, the city of uh, Valdez. Um, and uh, finally what I want to show you here is this is the surface sea surface temperature anomaly um, and it's for it's basically for um, the fir January 1st the week of January 1st okay here so you can see you know very warm area here um, January 8th January 15th and January 22nd so what I want to show you is there's more, this is the anomaly uh, based on a 30 year base period average. Um, in general, what I want to show you is the general trends are, um, this, is, these are, this is warmer. So generally the ocean in the southern hemisphere has a lot more anomalies than that in the northern hemisphere. So this agrees with the hypothesis that more heat is being transferred from the equator uh, to the South Pole uh, and it's it's warming up the oceans so it's creating these anomalies um, I also want to show you that this area here out, out here um, is extremely warm temperatures and uh, this is creating a ridge so the, um, the the jet stream flow that would normally come and hit California is moving northward up into Alaska and bypass it, and then it comes back down on the other side of the Rockies. So the snowpack is really low, and the uh, you know the, it's it's drought. I also want to show you that this is the um, this is the Gulf Stream coming up here. So what I want to show you is um, January first. Look at this. Look at this block. The Gulf Stream, um, at least on the surface, it's what's it doing there? It's kind of slowed down or blocked. It does it does uh, you know reestablish itself. Uh, but but this means that there's less heat traveling up to uh, up to this region. So you know there was a paper showing that. Uh, okay, a couple papers I want to point out. One, there was a paper recently talking about the brittle overturning circulation decreasing 10 or 15 percent in the last decade or so. Um, in a BAMS paper uh, from 2012, it appeared that this uh, actually shut off. Um, in, in 2010 or 2011 and then restarted. So there's some, the, the, the ocean patterns are changing. It's not just the atmospheric circulation patterns. Um, also, there was also a paper that was talking about the gain in Antarctica sea ice being correlated to ocean temperatures in the Atlantic. Um, so um, if you're looking at ocean temperatures near the equator, um, this, this, this finding um, is, uh, you know, I would expect this correlation because um, you're getting more, um, you know, you're getting higher temperatures um, in the ocean because if there's less heat moving northward from the equator, the equatorial region is getting a bit warmer, but it doesn't get too warm because a lot of the heat goes into latent heat of evaporation, so there's a lot more evaporation. So, you know, with this um, <coughs> system scenario that less heat's traveling north, you'd expect more rainfall in the ITCZ region and more heat to be transferred southward. So I think those, you know, those big picture global system um, reasons are the reasons why the Antarctic sea ice is growing. So, yeah, the, we're losing our Arctic sea ice and snow cover. The albedo's um, decreasing greatly in the Arctic and it's changing the circulation patterns of the whole planet. So yes, climate change is causing the increase of sea ice in Antarctica. So we'll end uh, here.